Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me. My name is Stefan Choi, and uh, this is Trading with Liveall. Uh, this is where I uh, trade my real uh, Reg T account uh, using LVX, and then you guys can kind of see um, how I do. Uh, if if I uh, if I sound a little funny today, it's um, or if I have a list, uh, just excuse me because I'm wearing these uh, Invisaligns, and they're kind of uh, they're not always the easiest one to talk uh, through. And uh, the dentist was adamant that I keep them on for 23 hours. I don't know if any of you guys had them before, but it's uh, it's kind of a pain. But uh, I guess it is what it is. So uh, let's kind of uh, go right to it. Here is my account. Uh, so again, the Zynga continues giving. Um, everything else looks like I'm doing OK. Uh, overall, I'm actually, you know, if I don't count Zynga, I'm doing OK. But basically, it, it's pulling me down. Uh, but let me, uh, I guess uh, it's down because um, I'm not sure if you guys know, but King IPO today, they're the makers of Candy Crush. And uh, it apparently didn't go so well. I guess they had an IPO price of um, of 22. And you know, last I saw, it was uh, trading uh, around 20. So, uh, so you know, down about 10%. But it's still early. Uh, I think I saw the CEO. You know, they were kind of putting him on the spot. Uh, but in the end, um, I think there is a uh, valid points to both sides. Now, I was thinking of shorting the stock when it came out. Uh, originally, when they decided to IPO, but uh, now that it's down 10%, uh, you know, I don't think it's as uh, easy of a short. So anyway, uh, I think that's why Zynga is down. But let's talk about something a little more uh, exciting. So I know I was talking to you guys. Uh, about Apple for for a very long time, and uh, it was because I was doing these call spreads over and over. So uh, I was doing this call spread. I was trying to keep an eye on it. Looked like it was uh, it was wedging, right? So I was talking about how it was wedging. It, eventually, it was going to break out. Let me actually use this one, right? So this Bollinger Band was getting tighter and tighter, uh, and it was kind of like. Uh, you know, there were people agreeing on price, but the buyers and sellers were equal, and I was kind of waiting for it to break out one way. It finally broke out to the upside like I uh, hoped for, and it was going up. And let me actually do the weekly. So if you look at the weekly, it's like a beautiful U-shape right here, right? So um, kind of like how we went up like, uh, uh, like July. And August, let me actually get rid of this part. Uh, July and uh, August of last year, uh, basically, I'm hoping that it will do it again, maybe up to the 565 area. But uh, this was my predicament yesterday. So, as you guys know, um, everything I do, I try to follow the uh, the order flow, and also I try to follow. Um, the volatility aspect of this whole um, whole thing, and yesterday, you know, it was similar to today, where it's kind of slightly uh, more calls to puts, but nothing here was indicating anything that says it was going to be super bullish. And as you guys know, uh, the volatility is pretty much at the bottom, like five percent range. So as uh, Apple was ticking up yesterday, so it was uh, it was down here, and then it started doing this. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't sure what to put on. I was um, I was running all these um, spreads that I was used to doing, but it wasn't that great, right? So the twenty dollars spreads that I was getting on for like eleven fifty, um, they were being priced at like fifteen dollars, so it wasn't really working. Uh, so uh, basically. Uh, you know, I didn't know exactly what to do. Uh, now, normally, what I would do is, um, you know, go in there and buy some uh, calls, do some call spread. Uh, if I was on the floor, 
it was uh, it wasn't any big deal. But uh, considering that my account is only like forty five thousand, and every one of these options were pretty uh, expensive, I didn't know which one to go for. So uh, in the end, I just kind of uh, took a shot, and I bought these calls right here, uh, the April 560s. Uh, I think I bought them for right around here. Um, yeah, so I bought them for like 335, 340. And uh, what I was hoping to do is have uh, Apple go up, and then I can start selling these uh, other calls against it, the 560 kind. Uh, but I'm not sure exactly when it'll go up. Uh, it might actually go up faster than I thought, uh, faster than I think. So I'm kind of like, you know, weighing the pros and cons. I bought those thinking that if Apple does not uh, go up uh, like I was uh, expecting, then I'll take half the loss and just call it a day. But if it is going to go up, uh, then I have a lot of options to sell um, other uh, calls or. Um, you know, maybe turn it into a spread or something. So uh, it's pretty. Uh, that's why I put it on. I'm, I'm hoping that it'll go up. It was, it was a lot higher before. I think uh, Apple was actually up a decent amount. It was trading, yeah, like uh, maybe like three, maybe two, two, three dollars higher. And uh, I was up a lot more, but in the end, uh, I think I'm kind of making like a two-week play on this, and we'll see. I'm not, you know, usually these like out-of-the-money calls, I'm not sure. They, they seem like a really long shot, so it's kind of a loser. But uh, I couldn't really think of other ones to do without actually having to risk a lot, right? So what I was thinking about is the amount of cash I was risking here. Uh, you risk like 3400 because I bought a 10 lot. If I try to leg it where I was buying like some of these deeper in the money, uh, basically even if I bought like one or two, um, technically unless until I sold something, I would be risking uh, 2300 per contract and I was kind of um, unwilling to do that. So it, it's not, these weren't bought because I thought it was the absolute best, but uh, it was the best in my mind for now uh, with the, with the situation that I had, uh, I'm kind of, you know, it went, one thing about Apple is once it starts going up in the past, it doesn't really waste too much time, right? So um, once it decides to go up like this, um, like here you can see in October, uh, basically it went from 480 to 520 literally in two weeks. Uh, here it went from 490 to 550 in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm I'm looking for the similar kind of performance. Like here, you went from 520 to 570 in in two weeks or less than two weeks. So my um, my hope is that this thing also has like a huge ramp up in the next couple of days, uh, but we'll see. So it's kind of a shot because I did it because the Bollinger Band was tight. Uh, I would have really loved to have seen some kind of um, order flow that really supported it, and believe me, I was looking for it, but I just couldn't find it. And then uh, eventually I just kind of, um, you know, had to make an executive decision, and I decided that it was worth risking uh, $3,000. So that's what I have in Apple. Hopefully it'll just keep going up, but, you know, uh, you know, one of my friends, uh, they, he keeps saying that I shouldn't use the word hope. It's a, it's a bad word when you're trading. Uh, but, you know, in the end, it doesn't matter, right? The bet is done, and, of course, you're going you're gonna to root for uh, your bet to win. And uh, just because I use the word hope, I don't know, it, it's, uh, I think it, it's more like mental than anything. But to me, um, uh, once, um, it, it's almost like it was like calling me to do that, some kind of trade to try to take advantage of the fact that if that... Um, if it broke out of that tight range for uh, Apple, that it should keep going up for the next like couple of weeks, right? So what I used was the historical pattern that when it breaks out, it goes, and um, you know I was uh, kind of hoping that I'll get some options uh, order flow to back me up. So like on February after their earnings, uh, 
there were a lot of order flow that was extremely bullish that kind of made it really easy for me to start doing the call spread. Uh, this time around, it's it's not as easy because uh, the order flow was actually not backing me up, but it was kind of like this. It was kind of like middle of the road, right? It, it could be anything, right? If you actually count all the options that are being uh, traded as a spread, uh, being traded in between pricing, uh, you don't really know what the end result is. Uh, so let me actually go to a couple of other ones. So uh, I talked to you guys about RSX. Uh, so this is a Russian ETF. So um, I was uh, I wanted to sell some puts uh, in 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 the. Um, in RSX because I thought maybe you know it's going to quiet down a little bit which will make the stock go up um, just because it didn't seem like the US was going to do anything with Russia taking Crimea and the biggest concern was uh, expansion into Ukraine that they are trying to prevent and I think for Russia uh, maybe for at least a couple of weeks they're going to try to uh, fortify Crimea and get all that part organized because they just annexed it before they actually march in somewhere else. So right after I did this, uh, basically somebody sold uh, these puts, uh, the 22 puts, and then I see this morning uh, all these trades. So let's see what that is. Um, yeah, so now they're selling the April 20 puts. So just people are just coming in and starting to sell these puts. I sold uh, at the monies, which were uh, probably kind of aggressive, uh, but uh, I wanted to, you know, I guess I felt pretty confident that it was going to be okay. Uh, the, and I'll talk about this a little later about my margin, but uh, it, it's it's something that I didn't really think about too much again. And then, um, but I'll, I'll talk about that as a as a margin uh, when I talk about it. A uh, little bit later on the show, but I, I'm I like the bet here. At some point, I think if this like loses half its value, I might just buy it back and maybe uh, sell a further down one. But I'll, I'll see how it goes. Um, if you guys look at the chart, it, it's kind of made this little V uh, bottom, and maybe it'll it'll go up to the 25 range. So let me actually punch that up. Right. So it it had this like sell. It didn't look like uh, there was any need for more news. I mean, I could be wrong, but for the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm thinking like it's gonna it's gonna calm down. It had a couple of uh, you know it sold off here. It actually made a bigger bottom. It maybe it, this one right here had a chance to go further lower, but it didn't. And then uh, I see I so I was thinking like, hey, I should sell some puts in this. Um, trying to figure out my overall strategy or trying to be theta neutral um, and then when I sold it other other uh, people started coming in and start selling so the, the great thing is you can actually start clicking on all these and then you can see people bought or sold um, so like uh, this morning uh, people came right away and sold but then uh, people started buying some and then people were selling it at 60 and so forth so it's a pretty good way of checking uh, how how um, it's trading uh, throughout the day. So let me actually go to C. You know, I did this trade in uh, SeaWorld, but I don't know if I actually told anybody. And I think, uh, so what happened is, you see this 5,139? They sold all this for 15 cents um, two days ago, so March 24th. So let me actually click on this. Right. So you see all these? They're they're basically all cells. Um, and um, and and they they did this. And I read later on that I guess Blackstone came out and said that they were gonna basically um, sell 15 million shares uh, and become not the majority shareholder of SeaWorld Entertainment. I guess all due to that um, that documentary Blackfish. Um, I saw it; it was okay, uh, but obviously that kind of movie is pretty detrimental for SeaWorld. 
And then I guess uh, BlackRock decided to unload. So I was like, hey, I, I kind of like this idea. They're, they're downloading. I'll sell for 15 cents, pick it up. You know, it's $4 away. It's not like there's uh, imminent news. So I'm thinking, like, if BlackRock knew that there was some news that was going to make the stock pop to, like, 40 bucks, they're not going to announce you know, the day before that they're going to unload 15 million shares, right? So I was pretty comfortable selling this. The only thing, uh, so I, you see how I sold two, but I actually had like 20. And I'm thankful that I didn't get filled on 20 because I found out the next day that my margin for selling two of these were 2,300. And uh, my margin for selling 10 of these was uh, 5,500. So it, it's just, you know, with the reg T account, just selling stuff naked, which I used to do all the time. Uh, it's just, um, I don't know. It's, I guess it's, it's something that I have to understand and try to um, implement into the margin. Because what this is saying, if you actually um, think of it as an investment, so you are tying up $5,500 of your capital uh, for the next three weeks to basically make 850, right? So, you know, maybe uh, like 17% return uh, on your money, maybe a little bit less, 16% uh, on your money for three weeks worth of um, selling. But, you know, this is pretty aggressive selling, right? So uh, that part maybe I'm, I, can, I can live with. This one... Uh, is not that good because I sold two, so I'm gonna make thirty bucks, and I'm gonna tie up twenty three hundred. So this, you see this nickel bid right here? That's actually me. So um, yeah, so I'm actually trying to buy them back. I almost feel like I should buy them back for a dime just so I can free up two thousand bucks, but uh, we'll see. Uh, also, I have this Axel position, which is eating up two thousand dollars. Uh, and what I did was I sold these April 18 puts uh, and I bought these April 20 calls because um, there was this huge block of trades happened on this day, um, February 27th, where people were buying. Um, now, when they bought it, I wasn't really, it wasn't like, it wasn't enough for me to do anything, but you see how they were paying like 65, 70 cents. Um, my thinking is they are so tied, closely tied with GM, probably what happened was they bought those call, calls and sold stock possibly, uh, but um, who knows, right? I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, uh, it's, been, it's been range bound for like literally, um, I think like almost a year. Uh, so since like June of last year, it's been range bound. So I was pretty comfortable. The longer the stock trains in a range, um, I found out the greater support it has, and it's harder for it to go below it. Plus, I think it's the stock is owned 99% uh, by institutions. Uh, so I was kind of thinking the downside is capped, and then I'll use that money for the upside just in case there was going to be some good news because I do see that they're trying to expand into Asia and such. So, uh, so that was that. And let me talk about EEM. So, you know, as I, as I kind of go around the community of people who trade uh, as a retail client, I'm, I'm actually learning a lot. And there, is, uh, there seems to be like a theme. People who are generally uh, pretty good at trading, they seems to, um, some of the implementation that they have is some premium selling strategy, right? Whether it's like a Condors, Butterfly, spreads, uh, but some premium harvesting strategy, mostly on the indexes, um, and I think that's kind of, uh, I see why people do that, because it's, uh, you know, you have a, you're kind of like a, being a pseudo market maker without actually being a market maker, because you don't actually have to be correct. You just have to uh, push and now you're putting the onus on the other person to buy the calls or buy the puts or buy the spread and be correct on direction and time frame for them to collect and you're just selling, right? So you just have to find out what to sell. Now, one of the things that I uh, realized going to uh, all the meetings and talking to folks 
is that uh, this like some kind of uh, condor selling, whether it's a strangle, condor, it's like some form of like selling on the uh, indexes seems to be pretty popular. Uh, in fact, one of the person, I guess like she's pretty famous, Karen, the super trader basically made a living at it to the point where she's managing like $200 million and um, and she is returning like you know like 30 percent on that which is pretty incredible and she's just selling puts and calls basically naked uh, on a PM account so uh, I don't have a PM account uh, but I thought maybe I can try to do some uh, one other thing was uh, I see people that they're always like just selling like so they have a strategy and they'll sell every month some kind of spread no matter what whether it's high vol, low vol and I think that could be something you can tweak to make it better and what I mean by that is you see like this this time when it's at a 52 week high uh, you can maybe sell the put spread or if you are selling the condor let's say you sell the put spread and the call spread maybe you can sell two put spread because that will make you uh, basically short vol and um, and you're actually leaning long delta by selling the put spread or an extra put spread or selling an extra put, right? So maybe uh, instead of taking the, uh, and this I got from just talk, listening to Karen and some of the other traders is why instead of putting on the strangle at the same time, you actually vary the strangle depending on when the stock is and how the volatility is, right? So when the volatility is high, maybe in the stock uh, for this, the EEM, emerging market, stock price is low, you sell, you sell the put spread, and then when it's like high and the volatility goes down, maybe you sell the call spread. So I, I was actually like, okay, I kind of understand it, let me try it, right? So at first I was just selling both of them outright, but you see how it's, this is at the upper range, uh, let me actually type it in here. So you see how this is in the upper range of the Bollinger Band right now, right? And then if I look at the past, yeah, since May of last year, it really doesn't go too much outside the Bollinger Band, even though this Bollinger Band is rising. So it could still stay within this Bollinger Band and go up every day, right? But it's not going to go up to $41. Uh, today, most likely, just because um, if you if these Bollinger Band holds true, it doesn't really go out of the range too much. So using that, maybe I can uh, sell some calls, and using volatility, I can actually uh, try to figure out how to do uh, how many options, right? So I look at uh, I look at the vol here. Let me actually. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, so by the way, you, even if you don't trade through it, you can get this Live All Pro. So no matter who you trade through, you can get this, and this is something that uh, a lot of the professionals use um, um, to kind of do their thing. So like you see this, um, the IV30 is still at the 40th percentile right here on EEM, which makes it uh, pretty decent to sell. Uh, and you can see uh, right here that people are selling the April 40 and May 43 calls, which is kind of funny, right? It's kind of funny because I didn't actually see that before I got here, right? So I was, uh, I've been in meetings. Uh, I should have probably checked it. Yeah, but you see all these calls uh, basically being um, uh, sold. This one actually looks like um, this guy's buying the 41, 43 call spread, right? Because he paid 82 selling this. So this, this thing is actually bullish. Right, but this guy is selling three thousand of these calls. Um, and buying the forty-two calls. So this guy actually has the opposite. So he's selling the call spread. So you know, whatever it is, you look at the phone Japan and basically people are interested in that line. And I don't, you know, it it's not that I know exactly why. Uh, but as you can see, I'm, I'm short uh, three of these, and people are trading 4,000 of these so far. And I would say most of these, uh, at least according to that um, 
thing. So you see, uh, sell, 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 buy, uh, sell, and then buy. So I would say it's kind of a push, uh, maybe slightly leaning to the sell side. But where what I can do here was uh, now if I had a bigger account, I would just let all these like just expire. But I think if I wanted to sell, so if, e, if EEM started going down again on the on the range, maybe the way to do it is I buy these back, uh, at least half of them, so I can sell more later. Or I just wait and not sell any of the downside uh, until EEM starts going back down, and I just concentrate on selling the upside. So right now, uh, you see I'm short the 40s on both, and I'm short the 40 and a half. Uh, so I'm, I have a decent amount on. You know, maybe I can, you know, sell more if I felt like it wasn't going to go higher. Uh, right now, I don't feel as confident uh, that it's not going to go higher. It, it looks like it might go higher, um, but we'll see. So uh, what I'm thinking is I sold these because EM was going higher, so I'll, I'll sell some more. Uh, maybe I'll sell these, right? Um, the April 4s, or maybe some of these. But uh, you know what? I think I'm going to. Yeah, so if anything, maybe I'll sell the 41 calls because that's where it's at. And then I see other people selling. You know, if you look at the order flow, people are selling some calls. But there are also people buying call spreads, even though this guy is selling those call spread. So we'll see how it goes, right? Um, um, so it's it's kind of still left to be determined, but I'm I'm kind of tempted to sell some more calls and see how that works, right? So I sell more calls as EM is going up into the upper range, and and as I, as I see other people sell uh, options. Uh, one of the things that I wouldn't mind doing is uh, seeing the volatility go down a bit, but it's not really going down. Uh, so maybe, uh, maybe that might mean that it has a chance to go back down again. But uh, this, so I am thinking of selling another call. Uh, I have some visitors coming uh, later on today, so maybe when they're here, I'll do actually this call. I'll tell them why I'm doing it, and then see what happens. Right. Uh, I also have this uh, pseudo straddle position in FX uh, I, and I put this on because I saw the I saw these trade uh, one by two, and basically the guy did it for credit. And uh, as long as it stays out uh, of the 33-35 range uh, by April 19, uh, I should do okay. So I see a lot of trades here. Yeah, mostly buying. Uh, so they've been, you know, they've been buying those uh, puts. And so this guy is, yes, this guy is actually, yes, he sold the 35, 36 call spread. So, so far, um, I've been looking into some earnings as well. Uh, nothing big. I know I talked about five people buying the 40 calls. Uh, yesterday before earnings, and they were right. Uh, the stock jumped actually more than this. It was trading a little bit higher, but kind of came down a little. But yesterday, um, people are buying these 40 calls uh, yesterday uh, all day long, and that was the biggest trade. But the overall, I couldn't make any uh, determination whether it was bullish or bearish, right? I do see uh, people uh, selling, uh, selling some uh, calls out. Uh, maybe just taking some profit. Um, the other two that I was looking at was Lulu, Lulumon. Um, but again, I was looking at it slightly more puts traded, but maybe they're selling more puts. But nothing here that makes me want to go out and say, "Hey, I need to uh, trade this." And uh, as well as uh, BlackBerry, um, BBRY. Same thing. They have earnings. Uh, on the 28th before market, and uh, I don't see anything that makes me want to rush into anything. Like there is slightly more calls traded, but overall order flow is pretty neutral. Um, 
so it's not it's not clear. So I'm I'm gonna look at it. But I'm I'm gonna get the earnings report every day. This is like the earnings report. It tells you. So this is yesterday's. It tells you um, what the volatilities are, what the implied move is, and what it really did in the past four, eight, and twelve earnings. And then you're not gonna use this for everything, and it's not gonna be like a blanket strategy where you're just like taking like. Uh, whatever the implied vol is, but there, there'll be stocks that you intimately know, uh, and sometimes what it really helps is if one of the competitors also announced, so there's like a kind of like a, a like a slight little forecast of what, um, what that might be uh, going forward. So uh, I hope uh, trading is going well. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, and um, uh, for those of you guys who want to try out LiveAll X, uh, go to LiveAll.com and you can try LiveAll X, and uh, and it, it and it's a pretty awesome uh, software. Other than that, I hope uh, everything goes well, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care.